Hello monarchs of the internet! Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful chainmail dragon. And as with all good chainmail projects, first you start with the rings. And they come in this state like on the left, not really open or closed, but you have to make them either closed or open. And that can take a while. So while I do that, please enjoy the story of how I saved a bird. All right, so yesterday I was at work and you know how you're like at work or like you're alone somewhere and like, you know, you like think you saw something, but like you know you didn't because. Why would you, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, it's just like. It's and like there was a couple mirrors around. And, yeah, and so like I thought I saw something like in a mirror. And like I was like, nah. Because there was nothing in there. It was just me. And then I, like, was walking around because, like, I was trying to be a responsible employee and, like... Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I was trying to be an ins... a res... a respon... <laughs> I was trying to be a responsible employee and check around the pro shop to make sure that there wasn't any, like, anything that knocked off the shelves or anything needed to be restocked. As I was doing that, I look up and there's- Sorry, cliffhanger, back to the dragon. Um, if you want to skip to just the bird part, here's the thing. But anyways, what you have to do now is now we're going to make the body of the dragon. So you're going to take one of your open rings and you're going to hook four rings onto it. This is the beginning of what it's called a European 4-in-1. So if you know how to do that, you can already skip this step. So we're basically just doing a European 4-in-1. If you don't know how to do a European 4-in-1, you make it look like a little bug like that. And then you take another ring, another open one, and then you put two rings, not four, two rings on it, and then you put it through the two other rings in the same way um, that it's set up. So you're kind of going down through one and up through the other. Uh, so that both middle rings look the same and then you keep repeating that and you're gonna want to have uh, I believe 13 middle rings so after you've done that this next bit is a little bit more tricky so what you've got to do is I'll give you a little diagram because it was really hard to see so there so to see though that's how the rings are going to lay um, if you were to lay that European 4-in-1 down, it would look like that from the side. So you're going to want to put a ring up through the first ring, down through the second ring, and down through the third ring. So it's going through three rings at different points. And then you take a second ring and you put it up through the second ring that's laying down, down through the third ring, and then also down through the fourth ring. And you repeat that so that all the rings are layered on both sides so then it ends up looking like that i think this might be called edging but i'm not 100 percent sure and there i'm just counting that there's 13 center rings which is how i know that that's the correct length now that the base of the body is done you can start working on the tail so this is going to be the top of the tail or the base of the tail and so you start it in kind of a similar way you put uh you can put four rings through um one ring and close it and but the difference here is that you take another ring and you put it through those four rings again so if you're getting confused about this you can also lay it out so that it's actually going to be two rings connected to two rings connected to two rings so kind of like a double chain see here i'm going to stretch it out in a second you can kind of see so you grab those bottom two rings and you spread out then the second pair, the middle pair of rings, and then the other... Ugh, it's so hard to explain. I just showed it. Here, I'm going to show it again. All right. So you have it. It'll look kind of like that. And then you need to take the two rings and kind of spread them apart and put it put your other ring through okay just look up a box chain if you don't know what a box chain is this is a box chain um this isn't sorry i didn't get a very good shot but there see you have to put that through there and then close it and it's attached to another two rings and then you put another one through so that it's again two rings attached to two rings and then you can fold it down again um so yes this is a box chain and uh yeah, so basically the tail is 
uh, this part of the tail is 10 lengths of box chain. Now I have to open and close a bunch of rings again, a bunch of smaller ones for the rest of the tail and some other things, so uh, here's more bird. As I was doing that, I look up, and there's a bird sitting on top of one of the shelves. A bird inside. Yes, and mind you, mind you, the pro shop is inside of another building, which has double sets of doors to get into the building. You got Houdini the bird. <laughs> and then there's another set of doors to get into the shop. And so I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> and none of the windows open in the shop. So it was like, hi, I don't know how you got here. Um, and I didn't really know what to do. But the problem was there was no doors. There was like no windows open to the outside. So like we couldn't just shoo it out. Oh, and it was just me working, by the way. And so I didn't know, like, I was like, hey, maybe this has happened before. This is kind of like a big building and there's like a big sports stadium. And so maybe there's like birds nesting in the rafters and like, you know, like in Home Depot. Yeah. So maybe this has happened before. So I go up to the front desk to the other two, two very underpaid college students paid to sit at the front desk and I was like hey oh and mind you this was like eight in the morning oh, no. <laughs> and I was like hey so is there like protocol for this and one of the guys is like there's a bird and I'm like yes there's a bird and I'm like he's like can I see it and I'm like like I didn't know if he just wanted to see it or like if he didn't believe me <laughs> to me that aside I will say one thing Ooh. about this Okay, there's gonna be a ring permanently down there now, so when you move the desk, you'll probably find a ring. Okay, now it's time to make the rest of the tail and the head. Uh, so I think, yeah, we're gonna start with the head. So as I'm, what I'm doing here is basically just the same European foreign one that I did, just with different sized rings. So the, all the middle rings, instead of being all the same size, all the middle rings are tiny rings. And then I have three layers of outside rings that are the medium sized rings, or technically the larger rings in this case. And then one at the end, I just have attached to two smaller rings. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm going to do that twice. So I have two layers of head. And after I have these two layers of head, then I'm going to attach them on either side with some uh, of the smaller rings. And what I'm going to do so I'm going to take the smaller rings, specifically three smaller rings for each side in this case, and I'm going to put them through um, either side of the European four and one little head things that I made. And so the thing with the European four and one is that it doesn't just have to be two rows, it can actually be as many rows as you want it to be. So what we're actually going to do is, I have them squeezed together right here, but what we're actually doing is we're putting it through so that it's going to lay flat. So it's going to be a seamless kind of, um, because European four and ones don't just have to be two, it can also be three. So you can see that they lay perfectly all next to each other. Um, just like they were meant to be together. So after you attach one side, then you have to just flip it over like that and attach it on the other side. And you want to make sure you flip it over. There's two different ways you can do it. If you flip it over uh, the inside out way, then the little guys in the end will kind of dangle, which isn't bad. It's, it's fine. But if you want them to kind of be tucked in there, then you got to make sure you fold it the correct way. Now it's time to attach the head to the body. And as I'm going to show you in just a minute, there's kind of two sides to the body. Um, there's the side I attach the tail to, but then there's this side, which is gonna look like that. It's gonna look slightly different. You wanna attach the head to that side and not the other side. So the little things that I was bumping up and down, you're gonna wanna actually attach it with two small rings on the rows to the back. You're just gonna put it through the uh, two back rings on either side and attach it just like that so that the little things that I was bumping up and down can kind of be under the head to kind of support it. And so now what I'm doing is I'm opening and closing, uh, or I think all opening at this point, I'm opening some rings so that we can attach the scales. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out the scales and then we're going to flip them over. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna have two rings per scale and we're gonna attach the rings to the vertical 
to the vertical uh, larger rings that we have on the body um, and the ones that were kind of the edging ones so here's the scales and I just lay them out just to make sure I know what pattern I want and that I have enough scales you're gonna need uh, 14 scales and then once you have the pattern that you want you can kind of flip them over and that just makes it easier to grab so you can just take one of your open rings and grab it and then you're going to attach it to that first one the closest to the head um, and then you're going to take the other ring flip it around and attach it to the other side and then you're going to take a second scale um, oh and see here that's where I'm attaching that to the head right there so um, that's what you're going to do with the first scale and then you're going to take the second scale and you're going to put it on that same ring you're going to put it um, you're going to hook it to the same ring as you did the first one but it's going to not they're not going to lay right next to each other because you attach that first one to the head but all the other ones you're going to start going down so you're going to attach that third scale to the third uh, sorry the third scale to the second ring down and then the fourth scale to the third ring down and so on and so he went up there and it was like kind of behind this like cabinet thing and so because there was like this basically this dead space between like the backs of like like in between two of the cabinets kind of in the corner and so he was just chilling down there but of course the cabinets are like you know 12 feet high yeah. <laughs> or something at least like 10 feet high and we had to get up on like giant bar stools. no they must have been yeah I think they were like 10 feet high and so he was like oh yeah there's a bird down there and I'm like great so like what do we do about it <laughs> and I was like and I had already I texted my my boss my manager like, hey, but he hadn't replied. There's a bird. Yeah, but he hadn't replied. So I decided to call him because I'm like, well, this is like kind of urgent. And I'm like, he's probably still asleep because it was eight in the morning. And he wasn't, he's not the kind of person probably that would wake up really early. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just call him because this might kind of be, you know, important. important, yeah, yeah. and like you kind of, yeah, health code violation, you, like you don't want a bird pooping on your merch, you know? Yeah, or like attacking customers. Yeah, so I thought, hey, this might be kind of important, so I called him. He answers, he obviously like just woke up. And so I was like, hi, so um, there's a bird in the pro shop, and he's like, oh yeah, he's been in there for a few days. <laughs> what? I guess he's resurfaced again, and I'm like, hold up. <laughs> exactly, hold up. <laughs> that leaves me with more questions. <laughs> and, so, and so, and so he was like, yeah, I've been trying to catch it for like a few days now. <laughs> Just try to like, shoo it out, I guess, if you can. And I'm like, but the thing is, our little shop is connected to the larger part of the rest of the building, which is like massive. And so if we let the bird out of the pro shop, there's no way we would ever catch it. All right, it's actually starting to look like a dragon now. So we're on the final stretch, and now we're just going to add some little uh, details to the tail. So you're just gonna take a ring and put two scales on it, just like I showed. And then you're going to take another ring and put it in the exact same spot. Again, attaching two to two to the same spot. And then you're going to take those two scales and you're going to thread them apart so that you can put another two rings with another two scales um, in between. And then, um, or uh, yes, another two rings with another two scales in between. And then you're going to take a final ring, but this time only one ring and put it through between there. And now that, what that's going to do is you're going to put on one scale and then you're going to put on one clasp because this dragon can actually double as a necklace and a bracelet among a few other things. So then you put on your clasp and you put a ring, uh, sorry, a scale over that to hide it. And there you go. You've got uh, your little hidden clasp and your beautiful little tail. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So uh, now... This is the part where it really becomes a dragon instead of a glorified snake. Now is time for the wings. And the wings, that's... 
Okay, the wings is the reason why you pay me to make you one instead of making one yourself, okay? The wings are a pain and they can be more or slightly less, but mostly more of a pain depending on very, very minute ring specifications and discrepancies that you cannot control. So, uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, first lay out your scales, like how you want your wings to be. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, uh, two rings, uh, bleh, sorry. You're gonna take a tiny ring and then put it on two, two larger rings. And then you're gonna put take that little ring and the two larger rings, I, I'll show you in a second, I'm opening and closing rings right now. Um, and it, basically the reason this is so hard is because it gets very, very tight and very, very finicky. Uh, so here I'm kind of laying them on each other. Um, yes. I don't know why you can't really see it very well. Um, if you guys really want, I know I didn't get some great, the greatest shots in this. If you guys really want to know how to make this, um, I can do a different one. I make these all the time. This was just kind of an introductory sort of thing. Um, hopefully the second one you can see a little bit better. So that's how it's supposed to turn out. Um, but keep in mind, this is sped up like 4,000 times um, at least. Uh, so yes, so here this is, so basically you're taking the smaller rings and you're sandwiching the scales between two medium sized rings and connecting them with the tiny rings. But the part of this that's really difficult is that after you make your sandwich, then you have to take two medium rings and squeeze them through these tiny itty bitty holes to give the wings structure. Um, and that's very hard. So I mean, you could not do that, uh, but then the wings kind of flop around and the dragon won't stand up nicely. So yeah, but anyways, so that is how you do the wings. Honestly, you could probably do an entire tutorial just about these wings because they are a pain. Again, if you guys want to see something like that, just let me know, but nobody really watches my videos right now, so it doesn't really matter. This is kind of just for fun. Anywho, if you do end up successfully making these wings, then all you've got to do is take four open tiny rings and connect them to the body of the dragon. And how you do that is you uh, count um, four down uh, from the dragon's head, depending on where you want the, the, the wings to sit, I usually count four. You count four down from the dragon's head and you attach, and you start attaching the top of your wing to there, and then you just kind of eyeball where you need to attach the bottom. Like I said, this can also be a necklace or a hand dragon or a bracelet, and so I'm going to be making a chain as well uh, that matches the dragon. And while I'm doing that, please enjoy the finale of the bird story. There's no way we would ever catch it. And then he might get into the concession stand. That would just be an even bigger problem for everyone. Or he would die somewhere and no one would have a clue where the stench was coming from. Or just something really bad. So I was just like, okay. And then me and this dude, like, look at each other. His name is Jed. And we're like, we're gonna catch this thing. <laughs> but we didn't have, like, anything to catch it with. <laughs> it sounds like something out of a sitcom. <laughs> and I didn't even know his name at the time, by the way. <laughs> like, I wasn't 100% sure on his name because it was kind of a weird name, like he told it to me, but I was like, I'm not 100% sure I heard that correctly. <laughs> Basically, our plan was, so like, we had like a bag and like this box oh, and no. a blanket. <laughs> oh no! Those were our tools. So we had a bag and a box and this blanket. And he stood up on this giant, like, bar stool, this plastic bar stool, up against the corner so that he couldn't fly down into that little cavity. And I ran around with the blanket and a box, which we eventually tried to put in the corner because he kept flying into this corner, so we were like, hey, maybe if we put the box in the corner, he'll fly into the box. It didn't work. <laughs> But it was a good try. And so, we were chasing this bird all around for an hour. And 
We finally caught him. Got him in a bag. Got him outside. And he was totally, I felt bad. Because he was like totally stunned. Aww. Like, Jed literally, like he wouldn't move. Like, you know like how when birds like hit themselves like against the glass and then they like are stunned? Yeah. It was like he was stunned. So like Jed actually like, because we didn't leave him on like the sidewalk. So like, Jed like actually picked him up and put him on like this ledge and like he didn't want to let go of his finger. So we had him out there and then like he was just sitting there and like I could see him from the window of like the shop. And so then a couple minutes later he was still like, he like hopped down from the ledge and he was like sitting there. So I went out there to check on him and he flew away. So. Twas a happy ending. That's the bird story. Oh, and in the process of chasing him, that's how I lost my fingernail at the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I just like ripped it off because. Oh. oh, come on. <laughs> the bird took off your finger. Okay, never mind. Okay, the bird. No, no. Attacked it's me the, it's and it's ripped off my finger, my no, fingernail. No, you ruined it. Five stories. Zero out of ten. <sighs> Okay, but would it make it better if I, like, told you that I filmed most of it? <laughs> yes, I did actually film most of it, and I will put the link to that short video um, down below. And here is the finished dragon. I did put some eyeballs on him, and I thought he was very cute, and it'll now be shipped off to my client. Uh, and here is a cat for you to enjoy, and thank you for so much for watching my video. Bye!